Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. The voice that you hear on screen today is Dominique James. I am the Communications Director for College to Congress, um, and I want to formally welcome you to today's webinar, From College to Congress, Launching Your Career on Capitol Hill. We have an action-packed afternoon today. Um, however, before we get started, um, I just want to make sure that all of you are um, prepared to participate with us. Um, so with that, um, you will actually see a little control panel um, on, your, uh, on your screen, and you should see a little raise hand feature. So this is a great way for you to interact with us. Um, if you have a specific question, you can go ahead, raise your hand. I will see you pop up on my screen. Um, if you can go ahead, find that raise your hand feature and test it now. I see you, Brendan. Thank you so much for raising your hand. Jonathan, Aaliyah, Yara, Alex, Casey, I see you guys raising your hand, Richa. Thank you so, so, so much for joining this afternoon. Uh, the second way that you can participate with us is you can actually drop your questions in the chat box. So again, you'll see a little chat box feature. Um, I'll be monitoring the chat this afternoon. And again, if you have any questions for myself, from the amazing, amazing people that you are gonna to hear today. We wanna to make sure that we don't lose you. I see the chat box. Thank you so much. Make sure that you join us in the chat box. Again, just so you know a little bit of who you're talking to, again, my name is Dominique James. I'm the Communications Director with College to Congress. And for those of you who are not familiar with our organization, uh, College to Congress is creating a more inclusive and effective Congress by empowering the next generation of public servants. So what does that mean? Um, I will tell you how we're doing that. Um, our organization was founded by this lovely lady you see in the middle of your screen. Her name is Audrey Henson. She is the founder of our organization and she created College to Congress really because of her own personal story and experience trying to find a job on Capitol Hill and really nav and navigate a career in, uh, in public service. Uh, Audrey was raised in a small Texas town um, by a single mom. Her family didn't have a lot of money, but she always had this passion to really get involved and give back to her community. Uh, however, because of finances, she never really knew or thought that a career in Capitol Hill or public service was possible. Uh, so she hustled really hard. If you know Audrey, she is a hustler. She landed her first job on Capitol Hill. But even after that, she still struggled to make ends meet. Uh, she actually had to work two jobs just to afford her internship. How many of you guys, if you raise your hand, you have to work a couple jobs, even while you're at school, just to make ends meet? Thank you so much. I see your hand raised. Aliyah, Jonathan, yeah, um, same experience um, from my end. Um, my family, I was a Pell Grant student when I was in college. I was a Pell Grant student. Uh, my family, EFC, was almost zero. And so while I was in college, I had to work and I just couldn't afford to take an unpaid internship. So our whole mission, again, is to make the uh, life a little bit easier for you. And we do that uh, through our College of Congress program. So not only do we help you secure a, a congressional internship with a member of Congress, we actually cover all of your expenses. So we uh, help our College of Congress interns. We cover your uh, travel to and from DC. Uh, we help you with a metro stipend, a professional wardrobe stipend. How many of you guys know that um, like buying professional clothes is super duper expensive? Uh, we help you uh, with meals as well, as well as travel to and from DC so that you can focus on being the most amazing internship possible. Additionally, what we do in our program is we pair all of our interns uh, with a senior member of a different political party or, or ideology. We call this our Bipartisan Allies Program. And this is really to help break down the partisan divide that we all have in Congress. Um, because with that, we know that um, we have good bills and people will be represented when we have people working together who are writing our laws. Last but not least, we provide you with training and development while you're here with us through the summer and even after um, so that you can go and really excel and get the best jobs possible in your career. And finally, we connect all of our alumni with jobs on Capitol Hill. So really amazing program. 
But uh, to get started though, I want to make sure that you know exactly who's going to be dropping some knowledge with you and uh, telling you how to kick off uh, your career on Capitol Hill. So I want to introduce you to our very first uh, panelist today. This is uh, Representative Larry LaRocco. Uh, Larry, are you there? Can you hear us? I sure can, Dominique. Okay, yes. excellent. And you can go ahead and turn on your camera as well so we can uh, have everybody meet you. Perfect. Okay. There you are, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> excellent. Okay. Well, it's great to be part of this program. I'll just give you a very short introduction so that we can get to your questions. I'm really pleased and uh, privileged to be uh, part of this program. Um, I served in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1991 to 1995. I'm a Democrat from Idaho. If you know Idaho politics, that's pretty difficult. I was the first Democrat in 25 years to win that seat. Um, it's the first district of Idaho. I started my uh, political career working for a United States Senator. I was uh, Senator Frank Church's North Idaho field representative. I ran for Congress first in 1982 as a young guy. I ran against an incumbent. Um, I lost, um, I got 46 and a half percent of the vote. I came close and then I ran for the state Senate against an incumbent and I lost and then uh, uh, in 1990, I won the seat. So uh, tenacity uh, pays off and um, I had built up a great deal of political equity, I think with the way that I ran my campaigns and I'd be happy to talk to you about that. And um, I considered the four years that I spent in Congress uh, uh, the best four years of my life. My public service did start in the Army during the Vietnam War from 69 to 72, and then uh, as a staffer and then a member of Congress. So I'll leave it at that, and uh, I look forward to your questions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mr. LaRocco. Next, but certainly not least, I want to introduce you to Ms. Rhoda Sheik. Rhoda is fresh off Capitol Hill. She was our uh, 2018 intern. So Rhoda, would you mind turning on your camera so that all of us can see you and you can introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Rhoda Sheik, and I was part of the 2018 cohort of College to Congress. And this summer, I had the honor of interning for my home representative, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. Um, and I'm really excited to be here to talk to you about what my experience was like in DC as an intern, as an intern for College to Congress as well. Um, just a little bit about my passions, what really get me going, or education, education policy, education equity, um, as well as criminal justice reform. And so I went into I went to DC and into this internship, kind of hoping to explore that and. Uh, and yeah, I'm really excited to share that with you. Excellent. Uh, next up, and you saw a little sizzle of it earlier when our presentation skipped ahead, I want to introduce you to Mr. Uh, Petri. So he's a former member of Congress. There you are, Mr. Petri, I can see you. Hi, I'm happy to be on the show and uh, introduce myself briefly. I served in the United States House of Representatives as a Republican from the 6th Congressional District of the state of Wisconsin from 1979 till 2015. Uh, before that, in the Wisconsin State Senate for seven years, and uh, I uh, had practice law as well. Uh, I also was a Peace Corps volunteer in Somalia from 1966-1967. Uh, Looking forward to any, any light I can shed on any questions that students might have about the opportunities and challenges of being an intern in a congressional office. Excellent. Thank you so much. And last, bringing it home for us, representing my side of the country, we have Miss uh, Faith. Faith, can you turn on your camera so we can see you? Yeah. Excellent. There you are, Faith, down at the bottom of our screen. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Faith Tuttle. I am attending Kansas State University where I'm majoring in political science and international studies. I was also uh, a member of the College of Congress uh, interns last summer with Rhoda, and I got to intern for ma then Majority Whip, Steve Scalise. 
Excellent, excellent. And again, I'm so happy to have you, Faith, because we are from the same side of the country. I am originally from Denver, Colorado. Um, so let's dive right into everything. And I want to go ahead and change the screen so we all can see you. Um, again, everyone, if you see the chat feature, go ahead and drop in your notes and questions um, or any comments that you have about some of the questions we're asking today. I will be here picking everyone's brains and telling you exactly how to make sure you can launch your career on Capitol Hill. Um, so first up, so uh, midterms was earlier this month, and we saw that people aged 18 to 29, how many of you guys are in that age group? I hope so. If you're applying, go ahead, raise your hand. We're the second largest voting bloc in the country. So people, young people turned out in record numbers this election. Um, why do you think it's important for uh, young people to not only participate in, you know, in voting, but really consider a career in public service and specifically on Capitol Hill? How about uh, Mr. Larry and LaRocco? Why do you think, now that you're off the Hill, why do you think it's important for young people to consider careers in public service? Well, I think public service is uh, a great way to get to know the country. I think it's a very fulfilling um, uh, you know, endeavor, and it doesn't have to be a career. Uh, the internship uh, program that uh, we're here talking about is a great way to get uh, a taste of Washington, D.C. and understand how public policy is made. If you look at um, the background that uh, Tim Petri mentioned in my background, I was in the Army, he was in the Peace Corps, uh, he served in the legislature. So before we got to Congress, we um, obviously had a feel for public service and we feel very strongly about it and it's a it's a great uh way to uh put a career together and it's not just in government it could be at uh, the local level with nonprofits, ngos and, and other things as well there's lots of ways that you can define public service and it's very rewarding excellent excellent how about you rhoda or faith what inspired you to really consider a career you know on congress or in congress I do. Um, a lot of the things I think that are motivating 18 to 29 year olds um, right now are is just kind of the realization that the policies that are being you know, enacted, all the laws that are being enacted are directly affecting us. And I think there's the knowledge is spreading now. And I think that's that's a huge mobilizer for people. Um, as for me personally, you know, I think I saw myself being frustrated at just the situations within like, for example, education. Um, and I thought, what is the most effective way for me to make an impact within it? Like, what can I do? And I think I am finding myself to go that route of, of being more, of being involved in public service. And so that's kind of what really gets me um, to, to want to be a part of it. Excellent. I have a quick question for the uh, audience, uh, for all the students that are joining us. What kind of issues are important to you? Like, what do you care about? What motivated you to vote in this um, election? And what kind of things are and kind of change are you interested in doing in the world? Go ahead, drop it in the chat and let us know. Prison reform. I love it. I think that's such an important mm -hmm. issue that's going on right now. Um, anyone else? Go ahead, jump in the chat and let us know what really pushes you and motivates you. Uh, Faith, did you have something to add to that? Yeah, I just say I definitely, I definitely agree with that. Um, some, some younger people in our generation, they think that, you know, politics just doesn't really matter, it doesn't really affect them. But working on the Hill, I was in just awe of like, how much what we what happens there and what is put into law just really affects people's everyday lives. I think it would really surprise people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so important. Um, and what I found so surprising about the midterms election is that really understanding that 18 to 29 year olds, we're the second largest voting block in the country. So we got next, right? And it's so important that we have a say in the kind of world that we will inherit. Um, so we talked about why it's important to get involved. Now let's kind of transition into, oh, thank you so much, climate change. That's a huge one. We saw those fires out in uh, California, pollution laws, immigration. I mean, politics impacts every area of our lives. Um, so let's switch gears a little, bit, a little bit and talk about why everybody's here, how, can we, how we can be prepared to uh, launch careers in public service and work in Congress. And so with that, I actually want to talk about what interns do. Um, so I know Rhoda and uh, Faith, you guys are fresh off the hill, and you can talk a little bit more in detail about specific things that you did. Um, but I'd first love to hear from um, Representatives uh, LaRocco and Petri 
about what you look for in um, staffers, but also how important um, interns were to like you being able to do your job well. So either Mr. Petri or LaRocco, take it away. Well, I'll, I'll just say that uh, we, first of all, we, we always try to give priority to internships to uh, people from the district that uh, uh, I represented. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, stu of our interns came from colleges in the districts. Uh, we had arrangements with the political science departments of several schools and the professors would talk to students to see if they were interested. There were universities in Wisconsin that had programs where kids, students could, could stay in residence and take seminars and get college credit in addition to being an intern. Uh, which really worked very well for a lot of different people. Uh, the the thing that introduced a whole variety of things, uh, working on the mail, working on cases with people in our office, and actually one of the things that we have a lot of visitors that, uh, to come to congressional offices with their families, looking to tour the Capitol and that sort of thing, and mm -hmm. interns would uh, take a little, little uh, course up on the hill on how to be a good tour guide and then take people all around the capital uh, area and help arrange uh, for, for we were running a little travel office kind of. So there's a lot of different things that interns did. Okay. So when people tell you interns are not important or it's just a basic level, it sounds like they do a lot. Uh, Rhoda and- also, uh, One thing we'd say is that we also, that we had interns in our congressional office back in, in uh, uh, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and so they were interning while still doing classes and, and sometimes doing other work uh, in uh, school, and they were helping in our district office working on uh, a, a lot of different, uh, helping the people who were full-time regular employees there uh, mm -hmm. on, uh, uh, with their jobs, and sometimes going around to town meetings with me and things like that, helping, helping on a variety of different things to help make our, our job uh, uh, possible. Awesome. Rhoda and uh, Faith, uh, can you share a little bit more detail? What stands out in your mind about what you did as an intern um, and really how you fed in in the whole office and made things work? So I, um, a lot of the tasks, I think starting off, you start doing administrative duties. So you're answering constituent calls, you know, sorting through mail and kind of being there, being available in case any of the legislative assistance or any of the staff needs your help. I think that's like first and foremost, your, your duty, but also there are a lot of perks that come, come with it. And I think as you like network within your office um, and get to know the staff really well, they send you to briefings and you take notes and you're, you're hearing from experts on, on certain matters. Like it's, I got to go to uh, a criminal justice reform briefing and it was talking about sentencing and the US Sentencing Commission was speaking and I think that, that was a huge to me because we're talking about people who, who know a lot about this, you know, who know a lot about sentencing reforms. And so um, that is not like an, a just one, that's pre that becomes pretty common as you move through your internship program. Um, mm. And then also giving tour, tours and yeah, things like that. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely think part. that. So definitely yeah. you'll be answering constituent calls, making coffee, you know, giving tours. But as soon as you accomplish that and you do that well, uh, you get to move on to other things like, like Rhoda said, like um, going to, you know, a hearing on the farm bill um, and then like writing a little uh, brief on it and sending it to your legislative director or helping with like flying dinners or um, just helping in the office and various tasks. Uh, Faith, I'm going to call you out. Uh, you had a pretty cool experience. Well, Faith had an awesome summer this past summer. Uh, tell us about some of the people you met and some of the special things you got to do this past summer on the Hill. As oh an gosh. intern. As an intern, there's so many people going through that door. Um, we had, uh, you know, Donald Trump was in the Capitol one day. We got to see him. The King of Spain was there. I said hi to him at the hall, so that was, that was kind of cool. Um, of course, you see Paul Ryan, Nancy Pelosi, um, John Boehner came in one day. You have a bunch of different secretaries. Bono, the singer from U2, came in one day. So you never, you never know what's going to come through that door. <laughs> and I believe you also had a chance to introduce your boss, um, then Majority Whip, at an intern day event, correct? Yeah, they have um, an intern lecture series mm -hmm. um, and just have uh, – Representative senators, we had a couple of Supreme Court justices come through, um, and I got to got to 
introduce him. So that was, that was pretty special. See how she left out some of the good stuff and I had to like pull it out of her. You're leaving out these awesome things. Um, so the whole point of that is that interns play an integral ro role in an office. So you're not just getting coffee. Uh, what I heard everyone share is that interns are responsible for going to briefings, taking the notes that are really going to help your office and your representative craft policy. So it's so important that folks like you have this internship experience, right? You're learning Capitol Hill inside and out. You are uh, meeting with constituents. You are that kind of first line of defense. So you are like baby representatives um, in that way. Um, so we know that you do some great things, but I'd also love to hear you guys share about what are some skills that uh, you know interns need to be successful. So many of the folks on this line are still uh, in school. So what are some things they can focus on or what are some skills they can start practicing that will make them be successful interns, not only in Capitol Hill, but really any internship opportunity that they may come across. And we can just go in a, a round robin. So how about you first, Mr. LaRocco? What are some good skills? Um. It's a great question, and um, I would say uh, writing skills are very, very important. Uh, uh, I think the members are looking for people that can articulate, uh, to, you know, their positions and, and uh, uh, where they are in life and so forth. Certainly, listening skills are important because you're going to be interacting with a lot of constituents. I think curiosity is uh, a main thing. I would add to the statements that have been made before that uh, what you want to do as an intern is you want to ask various staffers, is there anything I can do to help you? And just learn because um, um, if you can find a mentor and somebody that you could follow, I think that would be very, very important. And um, uh, my district was as big as the state of Indiana. It's 500 miles long. It's very rural. And uh, it was a great thrill to bring people uh, back to Washington, uh, D.C. And um, in my internship program and also in my four field offices, as uh, Congressman Petri mentioned, uh, that's a very important experience as well. A high school student who was in my uh, Boise office is now the treasurer of the state of Oregon. And so... <laughs> So he, he moved on politics and, and uh, really grabbed a hold of it. The other thing I want to say is that while you're there, it, you've all heard the, the story about the frog that got slowly boiled in the water, you know, and, and just really know that. What happens when you're in Washington, D.C. is that you're learning every minute, every day. You may not think you are, but then when you get out of that environment, all of a sudden, you know, when you go home, you have knowledge and a perspective that is unbelievable, and it, it, it enriches your life, it enriches those around you, and it, here's a key thing, it makes you more marketable in a very competitive um, uh, business environment out there for anything that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, how about Rhoda and Faith? What is some advice that you would give to current students who are, inter or who are interested in interning in Capitol Hill? What yeah, are some things um, to focus on in school or some things they can do? Honestly, like, I don't think that you have to have, like, this one specific skill or anything. But honestly, it's just working hard. You know, like, being, like, showing up early, uh, that, that means so much to an office. It, you know, just being there 15 minutes early versus someone who gets there five minutes late, people really notice that. And just, like I said, like working hard and actually being proactive and instead of just sitting there waiting for someone to tell you what to do, you anticipate people's needs and the office's needs. Oh, the coffee's almost down. Let me make some of that. Um, and so just things like that, I think just having the right attitude goes such a long way. Mm, ah, that's expert tip. Thanks so much for that. Rotor or Mr. Petra, anything to add before we uh, move on? Um, and especially take some of these audience and attendees questions. I think um, everyone covered it really well. I would, I would just add that you, I think within DC, you have to be really excited to meet new people. And I think this, that like networking, just networking is an important step. And so just kind of focusing, like tuning that skill as much as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, one, one thing I'd, I'd just say is it be worthwhile if, uh, if someone's interested in being an uh, intern in a congressional office to stop by at the representative's town meeting or office hour session and, inter and introduce yourself after 
or beforehand and just to, you know, give them a resume and say you're interested and 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 uh, who they sh who they should talk to in the congressional office or that sort of thing. Another idea would be also if you're taking anything having to do with government or political science in college to talk to one of your professors. Many of them have relationships with congressional offices and uh, uh, they might be able to put in a good word for you. Ooh, expert tip. I hope you guys are taking notes and writing all of this down so you can be successful in Capitol Hill. Um, moving on to our next question. And again, if you guys have no uh, questions for uh, Rhoda, Faith, Mr. Petra, or Mr. LaRocco, go ahead, start writing them down in the chat so that after we finish our questions, we can make sure that we get your questions answered. Um, I want to uh, discuss a little bit about why we are all here today. And what I love is that we have such a diverse group of people on this webinar, people representing Wisconsin, and Idaho, and Seattle, and Kansas. And this Congress is going to be the most diverse Congress ever. So we have a record number of women who are in office, uh, members of the LGBT community. We have our first two Muslim representatives ser serving, um, our first uh, Native American uh, representative serving, the first representatives of Hispanic and Latino descent from, can or from Texas and from Florida. So we are just breaking all barriers and making sure uh, that her Congress reflects America. Um, how have you found, um, so Congress reflects America. Despite those things, I know it is amazing, Aaliyah. Uh, despite those things, what we saw in the midterms was that our country is almost more divided than ever. So we're very much a country of red versus blue. However, in Capitol Hill, you gotta learn how to get along. So I'd love for you guys to talk about the importance of bipartisanship, um, as well as learning to how to work, how do you work with people who may not necessarily believe those same things you do or have the same way on how to uh, share that goal. Um, so how about you, Mr. LaRocco and Mr. Petra? You both are um, co-chairs of the Campus to College Congress, or Campus to College um, program with the former members of Congress, um, but you're of opposite political parties and ideologies. So how have you guys learned to work uh, in a bipartisan way to accomplish shared goals? Well, sometimes it's better after Congress to, uh, to do that, but, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, but... Uh, um, I found uh, I'm a moderate from a conservative conservative state, and uh, I'm also a you know former businessman as a Democrat, and so I had different ties, and and uh, uh, I think my interns represented that. Um, there there are things like there's the Idaho State Society, for example, and maybe uh, Tim, there's the Wisconsin State Society, and and at those gatherings. You have the whole delegation that comes together and their staffs come together. And those are the things that you want to do, the social events and, and uh, make sure that you network uh, uh, on those things. And um, all you have to do is sort of exert yourself a little bit too because they're uh, like from, if you're from Idaho and uh, Congressman Petri's point was really a good one that we tried to uh, bring in people from our state. So let's say that I had an intern uh, from the University of Idaho. It could be that the Republican office had somebody from the University of Idaho. You share that experience. And um, so networking uh, with people uh, it doesn't have to be partisan. It shouldn't be partisan. It shouldn't be hardcore. Um, there'll be differences in maybe ideology and policy and so forth. But at the end of the day, in the House of Representatives, for example, you need 218 votes. And how you do that um, mm -hmm. is uh, an interesting process. And generally, you have to reach across the line. You just can't uh, uh, shove things through, especially I think with this Congress, because um, it doesn't have a, a super majority, and uh, so we'll we'll see how that works. Um, I I was able to pass a major piece of uh, legislation, an amendment, by teaming up with uh, Congressman Jerry Lewis, uh, who became the uh, chair of the Appropriations Committee, on a, a major piece of legislation called the Loraco Lewis uh, Amendment, creating the uh, 1.6 million acres of a preserve in, in the California. And we worked together on that because our um, um, philosophy, our ideology, and our goals aligned. And um, you can see that in action um, on the Hill. It's not all partisan and it's not all um, ideological warfare. So you just have to um, really work hard at it.
Mm -hmm. uh, how about you, Rhoda and Faith? Um, I know that you uh, received mentors of the opposite uh, political party. So how did those relationships, um, or even within your own college to Congress cadre, how did they teach you to understand and listen and shape your ideas on bipartisanship and um, forming relationships with people versus with political parties? Yeah, I would definitely say that you have a lot more in common with someone from the opposite party than you may think you do. Um, and so being able to find that common ground to be able to compromise is actually a lot easier than uh, some people may think. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thanks so much. How about you, Rhoda? Um, I want to state that I am from Seattle, Washington, and I think that is um, we are, our, policy, our politics are very left leaning. And so I, you know, came from that <laughs> sort of environment in a kind of like a bubble um, to coming to DC where there's a whole lot of diversity within ideologies. And so mm -hmm. I think just being in, in li living with, first of all, just with the College Congress cohort, um, we've had a lot of interesting conversations where we were kind of like able to discuss all these important issues in our, where, you know, we can form those connections, you know, where, like where it's possible. Um, but even beyond that, you know, putting, you know, try, like doing my best to, to, I think just have that connection with, like it's, it's, there we're humans first and then, you know, our political ideologies come next, right? And so kind of keeping that in mind when interacting with people at all times is important. Excellent. Um, anything to add, Mr. Petri? If not, we have an amazing, amazing question that um, I can ask from the audience. No, I just building on what Larry said, and that is that that there you hear about all these national issues and things that divide people, but there are also things that unite people. For example, being in the same state, and and uh, people in a, a state like Wisconsin, uh, we have wildly liberal and wildly conservative members, but we all try to work together on things that are affect our state and help uh, each other be effective representatives. And uh, so, if someone wanted to do a dear colleague letter from the Madison area affecting the University of Wisconsin and asked other people to join the delegation, even though they might be of the other party, unless I had a really good reason not to, I would, I would eagerly sign that letter to help uh, an institution in my state. And they would do the same to me. So it helps you become more effective to build bridges across party lines. The other thing you have to remember is that sometimes when people are asking, asking about uh, uh, whether someone's doing a good job or is able or is a reasonable person or not, uh, some of the best recommendations come from people in the other party. If someone who, who normally disagrees with you says, uh, well, I, we're the other party and that uh, we disagree on a lot of issues, but that person is a really able person, or is a decent, it, it can count a lot. So don't forget about that. Yeah, and Dominic, let me just quickly add, uh, I know you have got. I want to get onto that great question, that there are caucuses uh, in the uh, uh, House of Representatives other than the Democratic Republican caucus. You can have the potato caucus or the sugar beet caucus or the, uh, the northern uh, border caucus, you know, in all the states that uh, border Canada and so forth. There are so many caucuses and that's what brings Democrats and Republicans together. So when you when you see your member uh, involved in those caucuses, those are ideal opportunities for um, cross-party relationships. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, I'm going to take an awesome question from uh, Miss Arela. Uh, she says, what's your advice in maintaining those connections? Uh, Arela, if you can still hear me, I would love for you to clarify whether it's maintaining connections in terms of networking or maintaining connections in terms of having relationships with people um, from across the aisle. So if you wouldn't mind clarifying that, I think it's an awesome question. Um, but, um, oh, she says both. So we'll answer both questions. <laughs> what advice do you have on how to maintain relationships uh, with folks that you meet on the Hill? So uh, Mr. LaRocco and Mr. Petrie, you've been off the Hill for a while. How do you still keep in touch with those people? Do you do like a holiday list or what's your advice for maintaining Hill connections? Well, everybody uh, uh, had a different experience. Uh, the average term of a member of the House of Representatives is now about eight years. But uh, uh, Tim, uh, I, I don't know your number, but I think it was over 30, maybe 38 years on the Hill, and, and I was there for four. Uh, but I was very active with the U.S. Association of Former Members of Congress, as is Tim. Um, I was on the board. I was president of the group. Now, Tim and I are both uh, 
co-chairing the Congress to Campus program, as you mentioned. Uh, I've been involved in many of their programs. So um, it's, it's, um, it's a group, the former members of Congress, which is the logo behind Tim there, of 600 former House and uh, members and senators. And we have this shared experience. And um, so we just try and stay in touch and um, uh, with one another. I mean, obviously, the internet and, and social media are a great uh, um, advantage for us right now. Uh, um, but I love staying in touch with my colleagues because I love to know how they got there, and I'd love to know what they did with their experience after they left. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Rhoda and Faith, I think you uh, ladies can drop some awesome nuggets because in our leadership development series that we run in our program, I know one of the things we teach you guys is networking. So how did you learn to kind of network on the Hill and kind of nurture relationships with people that you met? whether it uh, you know, was someone of your own party, um, someone who may have a potential job that you're interested in, or someone of the opposite party. Either Rhoda or Faith, one of you can go first. Yeah, um, I think when you start off, I, I started off networking and I would just talk to anybody and everyone and kind of, um, <laughs> it's like, hi, my name's Rhoda Sheik, I'm an intern. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then I realized that you, you don't have to do that. You <laughs> kind of tailor it to whatever you're interested in, who, um, whoever you feel like you have a strong connection to. And so I think the LinkedIn is a great tool. Um, definitely as soon as you have a conversation with someone, create a LinkedIn if you don't have a LinkedIn. <laughs> and, then, um, and then connecting with them as soon as you're done having a conversation, keeping business cards, like emailing them, scheduling coffees, um, just being really like forward, I guess, being like letting them know that you're interested in a job offer or connecting with them, even as a mentor. Um, but yes, that's what I would suggest. Excellent. Faith, anything to add? Um, I definitely agree with all that. And I think networking is just so important. But then also, I just want to put a cautionary tale that um, just because networking it isn't just like meeting someone for five minutes, like handing out your card to 500 people at, at an event, but it's like actually making that meaningful connection. And um, I think some people kind of get lost in that sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's more of a, a quality of a relationship. That, uh, oh, I, I just think it's very important that people just um, be very open and introduce themselves to people. I love the point that Faith just made is that this isn't just a transaction. I mean, you know, it's, it's gotta be uh, a shared experience, but um, uh, there's a member uh, who's now serving from the state of Idaho, Mike Simpson, and uh, he's a very senior member. What he did when he went to Congress is that he had the book of all the members and he went and met 434 members and actually shook their hands and wanted to get to know them and he would introduce himself. I don't see any reason why staff can't do that or interns can't do that. If you're in the Longworth building and you're having lunch, uh, don't sit alone. Go sit with people and say, uh, can I join you? And my name's, my name's Faith, my name's Larry, you know, my name's Tim, you know, and, and just everybody's sharing this experience back there and uh, I think it would pay off. Excellent. Um, I'm going to do a last call for questions. We have just about 10, 15 minutes left in this webinar. So I want to make sure um, that uh, your questions are answered. Um, I'm going to take these two, one from Yahara, or Yara and one from uh, Arlie again. So what's some advice for getting involved in caucuses? And how are you able to secure a job? Um, I'll say Mr. LaRocco and Mr. Petrie, um, for getting involved in caucuses, do you have specific um, points of advice or how to get involved in kind of your local caucuses there? Uh, Tim, you want to go and jump in? Uh, to Which kind of caucuses are we? I don't quite, I'm not focusing very well on the yeah, okay. Um, so Yara, if you wouldn't mind, um, go ahead and clarifying your question. I'd love to answer it. Um, but I think that uh, Arlie's question is actually perfect for how we want to kind of segue um, into wrapping up this webinar. So how are you able to secure a job? The short answer is you want to apply to college to Congress. You want to apply to be part of our program. Our application deadline is actually this Friday. And let me go ahead and make sure that you have all of these details for you. 
So you actually want to go to this website. Um, College of Congress dot uh, SM apply dot IO and apply to be part of our program. Again, what we are doing is we are actively seeking students just like you, people who are passionate about our uh, passionate about our political process and want to launch their careers in public service. Uh, you heard me share earlier that we not only will uh, cover all costs associated with a congressional internship, but really be with you every step of the way to make sure that you are, uh, you know, you are prepared to, you know, interview with potential uh, members of Congress in their offices, but also help you land that career in Capitol Hill. Uh, so the short answer to your question is, again, is I invite you to be part of of our, uh, our program. We uh, work with students on of all political ideologies. Uh, so you saw earlier that Rhoda and Faith are, you know, have worked in uh, a Democratic office as well as a Republican office. Um, and they themselves have different I political ideologies as well. So the short answer for how to, you know, work a secure job on Capitol Hill, um, as well as to you know start an internship is to apply. Uh, with that being said, there uh, the House actually does have a kind of a blast list serve that they do. You may go, want to go to their website um, to kind of see the type, kind of opportunities that are available. Um, but that is more often that more often than not, just you have to apply blind versus our organization is going to work with you to help leverage the more than 60 members of Congress that are part of our uh, program to help get you placed on Capitol Hill. Um, I will do one final uh, call for questions. And if not, I want to thank everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon. I don't know about you guys, but I could probably talk to you for another you know, hour, <laughs> but I know that some people have school and other people have, uh, have kind of a regular life to get back to. But again, thanks so much for, uh, thanks so much for taking the time this afternoon to shed some knowledge on how students can go and launch careers on Capitol Hill. Um, again, if you're interested in being part of our program, you want to go to this website, uh, our website, to apply to be part of our program. And some things that you want to work on while you are still in school, uh, you want to work on your writing skills. Uh, you want to work on your listening skills. You want to work on your public uh, on your public speaking skills. You'll be talking to constituents. Uh, you want to work on strengthening up your resume. And just as Rhoda and Faith shared, uh, you also want to uh, you know go and create a profile on LinkedIn um, so that you can you know network not only with our team but potential members of Congress as well. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, we actually recorded this webinar. So if you want to listen to all of these juicy nuggets again, just hold tight for a day or so until we get it uploaded on our College to Congress uh, website. But spread the word and most importantly, apply. So thank you so much, everyone, for your time today. I hope you have a good afternoon and we love helping you too. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone.